my name is Nisi Jaya. If you're new, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And if you're not, welcome back, gang. So today I am back with another crazy story time. This is the craziest story time I've ever done. Worst thing I've ever done in my entire life. So if you like crazy story times, feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe because I have a lot of them. Honey, exactly two years ago from this date, I was literally homeless. Wait a minute. Let's start from the beginning. Two years ago, one Sunday morning, go to church, you know, sit through the service, then I go out into the parking lot. I go out to the parking lot and I'm waiting for my granddaddy to get out of the church. After church, me, him, and my grandma before she passed away would link up and go get something to eat. Or if they cooked, I'll go to their house. <laughs> yeah, boy. About five to seven minutes later, I see him coming out to church. I'm like, okay, cool. What the move is, are we finna go to fast food, go out to eat, did you cook? Like, you know, boom, 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 what's the move? Because it's time to eat. He tells me he has has been feeling some pain in his stomach. He doesn't really have an appetite and when he does eat, it doesn't take much for him to get full. He was concerned about this. He told me that he went to Prime Ed probably like a day or two prior and they told him that they saw something on the x-ray machine that they couldn't quite decipher and that they recommended that he goes to the hospital. He continues to tell me that he didn't go that evening and he wanted to go after church. So I'm like, okay, cool. He gets into his whip, I get into my whip, I'm trailing behind. A little wave of concern kind of tried to hit me, but I had this mindset of like, okay, he's a pretty healthy guy. He went wherever he wanted to go. He did whatever he wanted to do. You know, very active. He doesn't smoke. He doesn't drink like you know what can like you know what's wrong like what can they say he's a healthy guy and on top of that my great grandma his mom died when she was 96 full lifespan so like you know genetics right it should be good i believe at that point the only health concern i've seen my granddaddy had to go through is when he had to get his gallbladder removed or something small like that so i'm like let's go ahead and go so they can say ain't nothing wrong so we can just go on, on with our lives bitch we get to the hospital they talking about they need to keep him overnight so they can do some more testing testing what you talking about boo so i'm like okay 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 let these motherfuckers do they little testing so they can see ain't shit wrong with my motherfucking granddad three days finally passed he's in there for about three days they come in the room talking about they got the test results they know what's wrong with him and shit girl <laughs> they gonna tell us that he got cancer in three places off rip, me and my granddaddy bust out laughing. <laughs> and we laugh because we think it's like some type of hospital movie, hospital TV moment, and this chart got mixed up with somebody else's chart because it ain't no way in hell. How can somebody get counsel? They don't even smoke. We laugh and we're not taking it serious. The nurse came in there. I asked her, I was like, can you check to make sure that that's his chart? Because I don't think that that's his chart. She was just like, yeah, that's his chart. By the end of the day, another doctor comes in and tell us that he has cancer in three spots. In three, in three spots. spots. I know it was the liver and I know it was the stomach, but I can't remember the third organ. But then on top of that, the cancer was stage four. Me and him was just like flabbergasted. We was shocked, discombobulated, dismantled, bitch. We was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Pause, pump the brakes, pump the brakes. So I'm like, where the fuck did this come from? It comes out that apparently 20 years ago, he had colon cancer. He had surgery to remove it. At the same time as I was being born in the same hospital. He had even asked to hold me after the surgery was done. So I'm like, boo because damn so like ain't nobody tell me nothing apparently it was some cancer possibly still left from that and it spread it and it had been spreading over the last 20 years does that not sound like a lawsuit to y'all like you know like how you had one job then they gonna have a nerve to tell us that that's the same doctor that's over this current cancer case tell me why i shouldn't throw this drink in your bitch ass face hell no you don't need to be on no more cases, damn it. Cause shit like I said, damn bitch. <laughs> My granddaddy blessed his heart, decided that he wanted to fight. 
I instantly went into the five stages of grief. I started with in denial. I was in denial as hell. Even at the hospital, I was telling the folks like, okay, well y'all need to get to chopping up his liver and taking out half his stomach and putting him on some chemo so they can get the rest. Because, come on, I don't care about no stage four. What's not clicking? What's not clicking? I'm angry because don't be recommending no doctor that couldn't do the job the first time. <laughs> My granddaddy was a God-fearing man, and you know, like, my grandparents in general were Christians or whatever. I grew up in it, and you know, we believe in miracles over here. I thought he was going to get better. He was still moving around, still driving, still doing all of those things. Three months in, everything changed. His health took a dramatic turn for the worse. He's literally skin and bones. He's fragile. He can't get up by himself. He can barely walk. He damn sure can't eat. Now at this point in time, I had left Walmart and I'm working at my new job. We couldn't miss any days of training. So I made it through training without missing any days. And right when I got on that production floor is when his health declined. I'm calling out every day and I'm with my granddaddy helping him around the house. I mean, honestly, I just rather have been with my granddaddy. So I go over to my granddad's house. I grew up in this house. I call a lot of other places home, but that is like, I go lay my head in at night. Throughout my life, I would go out and parlay with my mom and her mom's side of the family, but my mom's dad's side of the family used to come out to the house to see him and his mom, my great grandma. I generally noticed that I liked them better. Granted, the only time I would see them is when they would come by the house. I used to hate when they came over because nine times out of 10, I was doing something I ain't had no business doing. She came in my room, I had my dick in this hand and I had matches in this hand. Of all the company that was stopped by the house. I love my aunt, baby. She was my favorite. Going there on my own without anybody having to call me because I fucked with her so hard. I hear this ring at the door. I open the door. It's my favorite aunt and her daughter. They don't really mind people who pop up on them. And nobody called before they came. Even though my granddaddy is literally shitting his life away, they popped up and I went on ahead and let them in like, you know, usual. They go in the den and they sit down. I noticed this weird, dark energy in the room i don't know what it was like i just felt like you know i felt a little down a little bit i don't know i don't know i look up to look at my aunt she's looking at me she don't seem like her normal self but she kind of did like a little smile you know and then her face went back to like straight face she didn't really seem like herself i'm not gonna lie they asked where my granddaddy is i tell them that he's in the restroom not even five minutes later my aunt sends her daughter into the living room right next to the den chilling i'm just standing there you know what i'm saying I look up. My auntie looking me dead in my motherfucking face. Making eye contact. We just looking and she ain't got a smile or nothing. She just looking and I'm like, okay. Out of nowhere, I hear my aunt tell her daughter to get the Honolulu doll that was on the shelf in the living room. Her daughter starts explaining that that's the souvenir that she got when she went to Hawaii a couple decades ago. She brought the souvenir to my grandma. My grandma put it in there on the bookshelf. My aunt told her to get the Honolulu doll off the bookshelf and give it to her. Now I'm like, oh, okay, that was a look of and bitch, you bet not say shit. I see. So I'm like, oh shit, my granddaddy's still in the bathroom. So I'm standing there, you can't tell her, no, you can't get the Honolulu doll, even though that's how I'm feeling, because I'm actually very protective of everything in that house and the house itself. My granddaddy comes out the bathroom and I help him to go sit down. She starts asking about a VCR player. <laughs> Even her daughter was just like, okay, mom. Like, she's looking at me all embarrassed. Like, okay. Mom, we'll stop by Walmart and get you a VCR. I'm in shock. I'm in complete pure shock. Fuck it. This motherfucker finna die anyways. Let's just go and get our shit. And let's just go get shit from the house. As soon as she left, I tell my granddaddy what happens. And I'm mad. I am pissed. I'm hurt. Fuck this shit. I'm crying and all, bitch. My granddaddy tells me that it's okay. You know what I'm saying? It'll be all right. So the next day come, my granddaddy's not doing any better. Even more fragile, even more sick. The day goes by. It's a ring at the door. I know that ain't who I think it is. It's my cousin that came over yesterday with her mom and my other cousin, her sister. They start telling me about their concern for my granddaddy and about how he just didn't look good and how they felt like he needed to go to the hospital. Now see, deep inside, I'm like, hell no, because you don't go to the hospital to get well. Deep down, I know when he go into that hospital, he's not coming back out. Being very respectful, but deep down inside, I'm just like, oh. sitting next to him like, don't let them take you to no damn hospital. I 
such a peaceful, calm guy. He just wanted to keep the peace. And he was like, well, hey, if y'all think I should go, then fuck it, I'll go. Not even five minutes later, wee, 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 paramedics is pulling up. Next thing I know, they rolling my granddaddy up out the door. I have a whole ass panic attack. I have a whole ass breakdown. I was dreading this moment. But now that my granddaddy's in the hospital, my mom and her brother is there with him, you know, nurses and doctors, I go ahead and go back to work. Now, I haven't been back to work, honestly, I'd say two weeks maybe even three i have not been to work it's britney bitch and i am back i come back in baby they looking at me like where the fuck has this bitch been what type of break this bitch got you know how people is shit. i don't know how to mind their motherfucking business i think i left early that day too honestly i come again the next day and i finish my shift and after work i linked up with my co-worker friend let's call her Cam. I hook up with Cam to see if she had a ride back from work because when I was going to work, I used to take her home or well, like her son's house. Me and Cam were actually really close. She was older, but she was young at the same time. She wasn't like the mom of the group. She was kind of like that cool ass auntie clit like this. We used to hang out on lunch breaks or whatever. Could have been because I had a car. I did kind of notice that the people who didn't have a car would be fake to the people who did have a car so they can go get some lunch. In return for dropping Miss Cam off, she would kind of try to be like, you know, hey, come in some Smoke one, drink some, you know, boo boo. The son really was stroking his own ego, baby. Ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. I get to hang my depressed, codependent, solo ass with somebody. Got off at like four, I'd hang out there to probably like seven ish, eight ish. It was perfect. Over the couple of months between when my granddaddy got diagnosed with cancer to he had passed away. Like roughly three or four months. Was hell. My love life and my personal life was just in shambles. On the 4th of July of that year, I linked up with this dude that had hit me up on Facebook Messenger. He shot his shot at me by sending me a video of him beating his. We're now each other's sneaky link. Somewhere down the line, shit kind of took a shift and you know, I guess it kind of got a little serious. <laughs> <laughs> no, my bad, I'm sorry. Like, okay, I told him about my granddaddy's whole being diagnosed with cancer thing, and he used to hold me or whatever. Really, nigga? We were having raw sex. Instead of him pulling out, he would like literally go to like the back of my vagina and ejaculate each time. And I just couldn't figure out like why. So at this time I was working at the Walmart in Wetumpka. I most definitely used to take my cart over there to the pharmacy Act like I'm stalking, I'm putting something back. And I just take the plan B. One time I did it. One day. I just was like, you know, I'm not taking no plan B's. I'm not taking no plan B's today. I'm not getting no plan B. I get pregnant. Definitely felt cramps in my lower abdomen and I was stuck. Oh, and I asked the psychic and she said she felt another energy too. He starts talking about, I don't know who baby that is because bitch, that's not mine. And I'm like, so me and him get into it and we fall out. Then, that's when the bargaining came in. Then I started to think about how I always noticed how when somebody dies, somebody else is born. Or when somebody is born, somebody else in the family dies. I'm with this little nigga head, cause he not taking my granddaddy's spot. What did he say? Oh. And now I know this shit was meant, cause I kinda knew about like spiritual abortions, herbs that kinda induce your cycle to make your cycle come on, you know? I had this coworker that was telling me about this psychic that she met on Facebook. Her dad had just passed, and the reader or a psychic or whatever was able to tell her certain things about her dad for her to be like, oh shit, bitch, you legit. Now at this point, I have never reached out to any psychics. I don't know anything about psych. I'm kind of nosy, right? Like, I got some shit going on. Boom, 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 boom. I asked her to invite me to the group. She invites me to the group. I asked my question. First thing I asked was, was this nigga, like, you know, fucking off with other women? Boom, boom, boom. She was like, yeah, his baby mama. About a week or two later, he hits me up. I ignore it. Like, go on about my business. Go on, move on to somebody else. Let me tell you. That didn't work out either. My best friend who has been in numerous story times and I were really close. We're going on our like fourth year anniversary of knowing each other. A lot has happened in those four years. Now the first two years were great. Her baby daddy came in the picture. The most she would want to do with me is go fight his girlfriends and go fight his other baby mama. Like that's the most we were doing together at that time. That's so bad that I even gave her an ultimatum between me and him like... I gotta go, but then that kind of blew up. Everybody's still staying at home with their mothers. Now at this time, she hits me up and she asked me to her and her baby daddy have sex in the back of my mom's house, which was kind of like a carport, but everybody was at work. I told her, yeah, sure. <laughs> 
another time they wanted to have sex. My best friend didn't have no car and something had happened to her baby daddy's car. We were all together one evening and they were trying to set it up so I could get dropped off and they could just have sex in the car. <laughs> My mom's obviously gonna notice like where the fuck is my car. And she definitely was gonna get mad that I went in and left back out. They like, Nisi, please, please, Nisi, Nisi, you know we need the car. The option was to stand outside. It was winter time. It was cold as hell. So I'm like, you know, nah, I'm not trying to stand out here. Please, Nisi, please, please, please. I guess niggas driving like, you know, one in the back with a little cutie. I was just like, look. Y'all go in the back and I'm just gonna cut the music up. Cause bitch, bitch, bitch. I don't know if he was trying to show out cause he knew I was there, but he like slammed her the car just like boom, boom, boom. My granddaddy had to go to the hospital, child. I had been calling my best friend from the time I had woke up to me going down there, back to back to back to back, no amp. Okay, cool, do not disturb, whatever. I go down at his house to go feed his dog. I pull up to the house, I'm like, well damn, you know, I don't know where the fuck she at, literally. Thinking about like, well, where the fuck is she at? I walk back to the backyard. Her car is parked back there. I look in it. Of course, it's her and her baby daddy in the back motherfucking seat. Excuse me. So I'm like, you know, I'm trying not to blow my top. I'm trying not to blow my top. I'm trying not to blow my top. I go feed the dog. I leave. And she didn't really care for my whole face. Keep it classy. Be a fucking lady, bitch. I said be a fucking lady. Really talking to my best friend at the moment. I don't really have anybody to hang around. That was the only social interaction I had been getting ever since me and everybody felt like it was nice to have somebody to hang out with and just, you know, be around. Child, 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 child. Girl, I go take her over to her son's house. We get in there and sit down. The son has a friend over. Oh, so you know, the friend kind of cute. So I'm chilling. I'm playing the calm or whatever. Now, would I say I saw my co worker as like a friend or a sis? Would I have? Have given her a kidney if she would have needed it uh yes and no yes and no i had a lot of respect for her i could tell she was full of wisdom she was real cool definitely probably just using me for my car too but she was cool on the surface and the most she did to rub me the wrong way is one evening when i dropped her off i think it was probably like the fourth or fifth evening she asked me did i need her to walk me outside to my car and i told her yes and i saw like a <sighs> Like it was like a fake question just to be nice, but I wasn't really expecting you to say yeah. But other than that, she was cool, she was cool. So I leaned in to my little coworker friend and I was like, you know, what you know about dudes? What you know about Mr. Mystery guy over there? Is he cool people? Is his people cool? Like, do you know anything? And she was just like, yeah, real cool. His people are cool, you know, nice background, real nice boy. Now granted, I don't think she thought I was gonna take that to heart and run with it like I did, but I did, bitch, I did. I really was like, okay, what well, she says He's cool, so he must be cool. So you know, I'm like, you know, I'm giving him the eye, whatever. He giving me the eye. Then he decides to start up a conversation about this scar on my hand. It was a little darker at that time. Started talking about that. You know, we started talking for the rest of the night. We drinking and smoking. You know, I'm getting litty. I'm getting litty. So now it's time to go. Apparently, Mr. Mystery Man, let's call him Sean. Apparently, Sean didn't drive over there. He rolled with my coworker's son over there. They like, you go on here and ride with her. She'll take you home. And I'm just like... No. Well... <laughs> While we're in the car, we started talking or whatever. He asked me if I had a boyfriend. I told him no. I asked him, did he have a girlfriend? And he told me no. And he starts explaining about how he lives with the lady, that they aren't together. The lady still parlays with her ex. The ex come over and everything. And when the ex comes over, she make him go hide in the back of the house in a room somewhere until the man leaves. He tells me they are not sleeping together in the same room, in the same bed or nothing. That's all I needed to hear. That's all I needed. Even though it sounds like a cesspool of just nastiness, but <laughs> at the time, bitch, I'm lit too. Somehow, some way, we got on the topic of coochie eating. Now, coochie eating has just been introduced into my sex life because I'm fairly young at the time. So I had just got introduced to it, like with my sneaky link, but I never nutted from it. I loved it but I never busted a nut. So I asked him, did he know how to do it and was he good at it or whatever? And he was just like, good at it. Am I a Nikki fan? <laughs> Pull up in the Sri Lanka. What? I'm good at coochie eating, 
<laughs> he takes me to his uncle's house and somehow some way we sneak in the back of the house and we go in through like a basement or whatever you already know you already know so we do it or whatever i did not go back to work i call out the next day and the next day and the next day and the next so we get up and you know we get in the car or whatever and he drives around to his mom's house i don't really give a fuck about being at dude's mom's house for real for real i'm just chilling you know what i'm saying the mom has an attitude and i noticed it now we go over to his friend's house and his friend's just like oh shit Shit, boy, I see you, boy. Golly, boy, damn, you be doing it, boy. And I'm just in the passenger seat, like, you know, bitch was talking about my car. You gonna see what I mean. Lord, again, a fucking again. Nothing new, nothing changed, same old shit. Same old fucking shit. I literally witnessed him sell his gun on the spot to some boys at a gas station. <laughs> we gonna do if we actually need the gun and you done sat here and sold the gun he asking a friend for money and the friend just like damn man i'm tired of your broke ass da -da 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 -da. he's like come on man you know i'm good for it man da -da 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 -da. friend give him money i'm just in the passenger seat like you know i had enough sense to know better so i'm just like uh this ain't cute he go to another friend's house do the same shit another friend's house same shit go to his uncle's house begging go to his cousin's house begging 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 i uh, 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 no, no. And I'm not in no better position because I've been calling out from work. I'm in the passenger seat silently, big. So humiliating. I'm not turned on by that. You know me having enough sense to be like, okay, I have standards now. Let me go home. My little wannabe player ass. I know this ain't my husband, but I'ma stick beside him. Cause child, he begging to treat me, child. So let me just go ahead and jig. So right then and there, I didn't see him as compatible. I didn't see him as a boyfriend. Didn't see him as a husband. I know he's just a bomb. But I stick around because of depression. So I'm in the passenger seat like, all right. It's your world. We just live. In it. We go to his friend's house. His friend takes a cigarette, rubs it in his fingers, I guess, to get the tobacco out. Then he takes a bag of some white stuff and he dumps it into the cigarette. I'm watching him do it. That was some of the stankiest smoke I have ever smelled in my damn life. So I'm looking at him in awe and in shock. What in the hell is this that you're doing? He goes to pass it to me and I'm like, you know, no thank you because it stank and it burned weird. He passes it to his friend. They smoke and they smoke, they smoke cool. They chill for a little bit longer and then the friend go in the house. As soon as the friend go in the house, I ask him, what was that y'all was smoking? It's Molly. Now I've heard of Molly, Um, you know, Papa Molly, I'm sweating. Woo, Molly, you know what I'm saying, Molly. I know Molly is an MDMA. Now I have had experience with ecstasy and that was in bean form. I've been with my best friend and we done pulled up on some guys. Each time it was a situation where they just had it, they'll let me have it. I grew up on skins, but weed actually always satisfied me. So it wasn't like, oh, I gotta have a bean, but I have tried beans before. So being that I had some type of familiarity with it, I was like, you know, okay, you know, that didn't really like set off my mind. You been on e -ho, got We get a bottle, get some weed, Cool. We drink, we smoke, we smoke, we drink. Next day comes around, I go visit my granddaddy, and then I link up with him, and we go do the same the evening was winding down and me and Sean wanted to do it. He didn't have anywhere where we could go. I'm not coming off my granddaddy house for nothing in the world at this time. Family home. That's family. Boom, boom, boom. Like, ain't nobody coming through there. In my head, this house is for the next generation. It's, I was very serious about that. Very protective of it. That's why I was so mad at my best friend. He didn't know anything about my granddaddy dying at the time. Even though I know it's somewhere warm for us to go. I got us all in the cold. You know, we outside trying to find a safe place to have sex in the car. He thinks of a place. We go to one of his family members houses in the same neighborhood as his mom we get out of the car he talk about some shh. he opens up the gate we go into the backyard it's this shed oh man no man no oh, oh, man I but it's like I'm it's not it opens up the door to the shed it went locked we hop on up in there he cuts on the light it was a remodeled shed the shed was remodeled one of the lawnmowers in there and shit had wood paneling on the walls and it was two couches in there it was some comforters and blankets on the couch as well and like a space heater bitch girl 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 we do it again and we lay down I didn't want to go home bitch I do not know why I didn't want to go home cause usually that's my number one prerogative is to go the fuck home not want to go back to my life like i just 
I stuck to his ass like Velcro. Next day comes around. We do the same thing. That went on for about like two or three days. At this point, I'm only going home to my mom's house to take a shower and leave. And the next day. My granddaddy passed away. Saddest day of my fucking life. I go up to the hospital. Some family members from my mom's mom's side is there. Family members from my mom's dad's side is there. Now I'm sitting on this couch that's in the hospital room. Apparently when people die, they die with their mouth open. I guess the people from the funeral home or the nurses have to break their jaw for them to be able to close their mouth. I didn't know that. Body is laying in the bed, lifeless with his mouth open. I'm getting a little agitated about that. So it's the people to come break his jaw, like so he can close his fucking mouth in the afterlife. I'm getting kind of mad. We're kind of getting a little restless because we're like, okay, where's the people that break the jaws and make their mouths close? Like, I got a cousin on my granddaddy's side. Lord. Cousin's mom asked her to get a picture of my granddaddy while he was like, you know, freshly dead on the hospital bed. Nobody came to break his jaw yet to close his mouth. So she's texting her mom, you know, boom, boom. Her mom is consistently asking for a picture, you know, pressing about the picture. I'm pretty sure the daughter probably told her like you know actually know that her daughter told her that because her daughter was kind of reading the text messages out loud like oh my want a picture of him they ain't closed his mouth yet okay let me tell her they ain't closed his mouth yet her mom texted her back and was just like i guess i need to have a picture of him now nah, damn it this bitch you will not bring your ghetto here so her daughter, my cousin, asked me was it okay for her to take a picture while his mouth was still open Bitch. I'm pretty sure I was obviously mad because it's like I didn't wake up and they No The whole side was just killing me I was like damn that was supposed to be the good ones So at this point I don't want to deal with my mom's mom's side or my mom's dad's side Like I'm just done <laughs> Like nobody talked to me So everybody leaves one by one And eventually it was just me and my mom and my uncle and my grandma his wife. We stayed there until the funeral home people came and picked him up. They were actually picking up somebody else across from the hall too. So I was just like, shit, it's a lot of death around this motherfucker. God, me. Go down to my granddad's house and feed the dog. Sean calling me like motherfucking crazy. And even though subconsciously something is telling me don't answer, just going on with your life. The depressing codependency that I had for him at the time just wanted me to be with him. I go pull up on Sean at his house. The lady that he stayed with, ex-boyfriend was over there. He had a picture pickup truck the pickup truck was parked in the driveway for some reason sean told me to come the other way you know he gonna he gonna hop out and creep and hop up in the car why i don't know at the time i didn't care like you can't tell me that don't sound too complicated like why is you still sneaking and this lady ex is still there and then blah, blah, blah. I lick up with Sean, we go get some liquor, we go get some weed, you know, I'm good, I'm good, I'm content. He goes to the trap. He gets some cocaine. Just make a conversation, so I ask him, like, oh, is that Molly? And he was like, no, <laughs> it's coke. I'm not really a judgmental person. I guess that kind of should have just been my, like, okay, I need to cut this motherfucker off, and I really should have, but it wasn't. I've seen Pulp Fiction, I know of Coke, but like, I know that the real terror is actual crack. Crack is whack. Now, if he would've pulled out a needle and started sticking himself with like a crack pipe, my ass would've went home. But we gonna make our rounds to his cousin house or whatever, go to his friend's house. I guess he starts to pick up the vibe that like, you know, as a man, this is pretty embarrassing. He starts telling me how he just had a job at the chicken house and he lost it like literally two weeks ago. And he has a car, but it has to be fixed. He took me around to the neighborhood mechanic, showed me his car parked in the driveway to be fixed. I'm like, okay, so you're not completely a... He takes me by his mom's house his mom got a horrible ass attitude it pissed me off on a respect level but not on a i want you to be my mother-in-law level because i already know i don't want to marry your son i thought i was doing some child all of a sudden he trying to get me to stay over his mama house no man we leave from his mama house next thing you know he gets a phone call and it's the lady that he was staying with let's call her ethel you ethel on the phone like yeah and i saw you leave with that girl i saw you leave with that girl i saw you walk down the street and got into the car with that girl and i saw she called you on facebook messenger yeah she real pretty i looked at her picture and she looked way better than them other girls that you call yourself you trying to talk to yeah turns out that ethel had been so 
told Sean, like, before you decide to cheat on me, you could just bring home the girl and we can have sex with her together. So now I know that the lady that he stay with know me. Go pull up on his friends and his cousins and they hop in the car. They got somewhere they want to go. They want to ride. They want to hang out and shit. They'll hop in the car and ride around with us and get dropped off wherever. We in the car and curiosity got the best of me. So I had asked him to let me hit the Molly cigarette. Feeling like, fuck it, you know, I'm feeling like it's been a long week, a long year, a long life. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. I did, I did, I did, I did, I did. I asked to hit the Molly cigarette. Now, I didn't really see what the hype was about. It really didn't do anything to me. So, like, I was like, you know, whatever. I mean, it's all right. Like, overrated as fuck, in my opinion. I mean, and you know what, though? That's typically how the bullshit goes. You feel me? Don't, Don't try, try it. it. It definitely did not taste good, and it wasn't good enough. So, I'm like, ugh, okay. You know, mm. So I gave him back his Molly cigarette and I just continued on with my black. Ugh. That shit made me sick. He gets this phone call from a girl and she's like, oh, hey, I got the money that you wanted. Said the girl that called was his sister. He tried to leave me at his mama house again and I was like, hell no. Nah. It gets towards the end of the night. He got the money that his sister gave him and we stopped by the plug, you know. Baby, he gets back in the car. He gets the little bag of coke out. He, he get the snot of his coke. I'm in the passenger seat and I'm just like, I'm looking. I wanna try it. I did. It's good, it's all right, but it ain't great. I didn't get what the hype was about, so I still smoked my blunt. That night, literally right before my granddaddy's funeral is when I tried coke. <laughs> Saturday come, my mama come in my room waking me up. I did not want to go to that funeral. I just didn't want to go to the funeral. I, I didn't want to go, but I had to go. When I saw my granddaddy in that fucking casket, it's that time of the eve. We want to do it and chill or whatever. He talking about he ain't trying to go into no shed because he feel like he ain't no animal. Get him to go to my grandparents' house so we can do it in the backyard. I don't know why, but I thought that that was like, you know what I'm saying? Hell, the backyard is already tainted, so we good. I'm thinking if anybody gonna have sex in this backyard, it's gonna be me. I definitely explained where we were going because it's a long drive out of the city and I ain't want him to think I was trying to kill him or something. So I finally decided to give him the whole spiel. So I was like, yeah, this is my grandparents' house. This bitch really smart as fuck now that I look back at it. Started from, okay, I'm not trying to have sex in the shed to, okay, I'm not trying to have sex outside in the Cold. Cause it was winter time. I just didn't want to be alone. And I'm on multiple drugs. I've done a lot of ridiculous things I've just been sad. I've been through suicidal episodes before. I already know. I need something to keep my focus off what's going on. Like I need something to do. Something to look forward to. Like I definitely probably would have kept my job if I had a house to remodel. I think. Me and my granddaddy definitely had touched on the house subject and me getting it. He brought it up to my mom and my uncle when he was in the hospital and they was just like, uh, she's not mature enough for it. Which they were right. Things that I was trying to do, like rip off wallpaper, knock down walls, change out Florence paint. Like it's been like that for like 40 years. I'm trying to freshen it up for the new generation. That was the only thing that brought peace to my mind, just thinking about renovating house. I guess they kind of wanted me to just stay there because you know, obviously who else gonna be there but you like you know obviously the house is yours but i kind of wanted them to say it and they just would not say it they would not say it like and i'm talking about like i'll text my uncle he'd ignore me i text my mom she'll say that she don't think i'm ready which just should have been my answer my mind at the time was not like, i had a key and everything but like it literally looked like my grandparents house and it's an empty house it just made me sadder because it just reminded me that oh yeah my grandparents are dead girl i had got on facebook and asked the psychic what they was gonna do with the house and she started talking about like they was gonna sell it and shit and that's just not baby you want to talk about like who grew up selling the house that i grew up in i went monkey nuts and that's exactly why you're not supposed to inquire with no motherfucking psych but nevertheless, I was welcome to stay there. There was only one condition. I couldn't have nobody over there with me. I never listened to my mother at the time, but this is one particular time my ass should have fucking listened. Supposed to be cleaning up the house. A lot of stuff need to be thrown in the dumpster. Room is like hoarded out. It's just like a whole lot of stuff back there. Against my mother's wishes, I tell Sean to go ahead and come on in. I need you to help me clean up the house tomorrow anyway. With crackhead eyes sparkle. We went to sleep, child. He wakes up before me the next day. Guess he got some decency to him, but he come 
wake me up. You know, get up, get up. We finna clean. You know you said we was gonna clean. Come on, get up and come on and clean. I get up and we go to the first bedroom in the hallway to start cleaning because that room was also cluttered. He just was going through that bitch like the Tasmanian devil, bitch. He just in that hole. He just all oh, like, you know, he just... Even look like he cleaning. Like I'm just like I'm standing next to the door like it's Christmas morning and I'm watching my kids unwrap their gifts. It don't look like he cleaning. So I'm looking at him just go through the room, just boom, 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 like looking for something. I felt comfort because my granddaddy was not a rich man. What did he say? Now whenever I needed something, sometimes it'll be a yes, sometimes it'll be a no. Like I ain't trying to call him out or nothing, but I've seen him have to borrow twenty dollars until he get paid the next week. I've seen that, so you know, like great guy, but I knew he wasn't a rich man. That's all I'm saying. I just really want to nail it in y'all head that I did not know that the next set of events that happened was gonna happen. I didn't want to be mean. I don't know. I'm just letting him make an ass out himself because I know he not finna find shit. Cause my granddaddy, God rest his soul, nine times out of ten don't have nothing to find. So I'm like, okay, I'm sorry, granddaddy. You know I love you. I just want them to understand that I didn't know. Please help me understand why. Bless his heart because he was determined. He moving the shit. He moving the shit. He moving the shit around. He moving the shit around. Ain't picking shit up. Ain't putting nothing in no powder. Throw it in a bag or nothing. He just moving shit around. Gets down to where he find him a pair of pants. He goes to look into the pocket. He look into the wallet, bitch. Please tell me why he pulls out blue face hundreds. <laughs> motherfucker pull out $800. 800 motherfucking dollars. He looked back at me like, ooh. Dad, I know if I wasn't there, he would have kept that. I know the previous story times do not help in my case. I ain't never in a million gazillion years expect for him to find no goddamn money. I got an attitude with everybody in my personal life right now. At this point, I'm still cordial with my best friend and my mom and everybody, but I've mentally checked out with texting them and talking to them. Like, I'm not talking to anybody. And I should have texted her and been like, hey, you know, boom, 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 boom. I shouldn't have brought the motherfucker over there in the first place. Now, I'm a fair bitch. I'm a fair bitch. Nine times out of ten, I probably was not gonna find that on my own. I really underestimated my granddaddy. Rest in peace to you. Shout out to you, my nigga. So I'm like, okay, you know, you get 400, I get 400, and that's it. This greedy bitch got too motherfucking thirsty. He's like, okay, cool. He goes into the kitchen and he gets my granddaddy's car keys. Like he goes outside to the truck. I'm following right behind him. So he in the truck and he's looking in the truck to see what he can find. I'm on the other side of the truck door and I'm watching him. I'm like, damn, okay, my dad. I don't know what the fuck you got going on. Mm -mm -mm. We going back in the house to get ready to go. He happy as fuck about the money. <laughs> he taking pictures, putting it all on social media. He happier than a bitch. We leave the house. Driving around to pull up on his friends and he's trying to get them to go to the bank. And we go to the trap. It's a pound of weed or enough weed that he can sell. So I'm like, you know, yay. You know, you finna get back on your feet. Get back out here and hustle. Boom, 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 boom. Like, you know, okay, you know, we good. I'm just back on out this hoe. But no, bitch, no, 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 no. So he's smoking out the pack, bitch. I'm smoking out the motherfucking pack, bitch. I ain't gonna lie, I'm getting cooked. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. So he's pulling up on different friends. He happy as fuck, you know. He giving out money. They like, hey, let me borrow $5. Let me borrow $20. Even though they was just giving him the stank face when he asked them a couple days ago. He giving it to them. He goes to pull up on his uncle. And that hope for a long ass time. He comes out and we went to his mom's house. Mom asking him for money. He got a stepdaddy too. His stepdaddy was there. He was really rude and dry. Couldn't never figure it out, but I didn't really care either, but I definitely noticed it. In fact, his whole family treated him like some type of flunky. Relax. Mean and rude to him and shit. And I noticed that. You know I don't like that because I can relate to that. So I'm just like, you know, you need to stand up to them. I'm trying to have me a little movie moment. At least we can like try to get to the root of the issue. Girl, mm-mm. And the sister the husband used to kind of tell him to like go places and do stuff and then look at me. Bitch, you know what you doing. You know his little stupid ass finna go do it knowing damn well you think he's stupid. Think I'm stupid right along with him. He used to do that shit and look me right in my eyes and I used to look him right in his eyes back. Just stupid suggestions that he know Sean dumb ass gonna say yeah to. And I'm just looking at him like, you know that's not Sean car right? And he looking at me like you know you here like a dumb ass, right? I'm trying to be cultural with the mama and sister they got attitudes and I could never figure out why they had attitudes. <laughs> 
don't know. She's just not normal. Something in the buttermilk ain't clean. It's just funny because I am in junkie mode at that time and I don't know why I couldn't see that in myself. One of his brothers were married. I recognized his wife because I'm a nosy bitch. I was on Victoria page and I saw where her and Victoria took a picture together and I guess they worked together at one point in time. And she posted it on her page and tagged Victoria in it. So I mean, I assumed that they were friends, you know, boom, boom, boom. Me not respecting that I'm literally Wanda right now. I call myself trying to be cordial to this lady. I'm trying to be nice. Like today, I couldn't even fathom doing that and looking at motherfuckers' eyes and speaking to them. But I did. Like I was really just like, you know, hey, you know, you know my cousin, right? Da -da 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 -da. It's like, yeah, I don't know her. I, I don't know her. <laughs> always a family gathering a family get together or some shit I was with him so i was always there first of all everybody knew i was on that shit and they were treating me like that like giving me like little side eyes giving me you know looks to look you know what i'm saying yeah. You know, in my head i'm just taking a mental vacation bitch i'm gonna see my granddaddy again huh completely over my family. I don't go around for Christmas. I don't go around for New Year's. I don't spend any time with my family. I am literally looking for love in the streets. I'm literally in the streets looking for love. When there's literally no love in it. other lady that he slept with in the past that stayed a house down from his mom there her boyfriend was there her friend or whatever Sean told me not to accept anything that wasn't given by him I don't know how I ended up trying meth I'm sorry I don't want to share this with y'all are you out of your mind right now you want to talk about a bitch brain literally just oozed out her ear and just was on the floor and stumped on don't do it though the cousin in the back seat hyping up Sean to go here and to go there and Sean dumbass going here and going there. We gonna pull up to Sean house and Ethel comes outside. Said I was pretty again in person. We met on different terms. His phone ring. It's the sister that gave him money. She's going off about something. Da -da 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 -da. She mad as fuck. She's mad as fuck. I guess Sean had told her a lie about me. So like she starts going off about this and going off about that. And it turns out that he got a son. Baby mama's still in love with him too. And his baby mama and the sister that he's fucking and getting the money from are cool. And they both don't like Ethel. You know who I am now. They think I'm a threat. They think I'm an addition to the sister wives. They all trying to figure out who the fuck am I. They're fucking each other. Ass on the table now. I should have been more pro women than I was. But shit, I wasn't even pro niece then. I don't really like particularly care. It's a whole ass mess. Elta had her own shit. Had her own house. Had her own car. Something happened to her truck like two weeks prior. So coincidentally, I came in the picture just in time so he could use my car. A fucking game. So like this motherfucker is really pulling the strings like a tea bag. I'm not in control of shit at this point because I'm not in my right mind whatsoever. I'm really out my mind. Started to come clear to me why his mom was always kind of so rude to me. Cause shit, she tired of being all these damn women. Hell, the whole family knows why they didn't really acknowledge me or was nice to me or anything. They, they, they just, you know what I'm saying? Bitch, it's gonna be another you next week. Bitch, you the third motherfucker we done met this month. I don't know how me and Ethel became friends telling me certain things so i know he was telling her like hey you know you don't have no way to work you don't have no car you don't have no transportation let's just use this girl here for her car and her transportation basically giving her something for her to look at it and be like okay it's okay you know i'm just high me and him together start picking Ethel up from work. We picked her up from work. I noticed that she worked at the same job as my cousin. My cousin Shirley and the My Family Ain't Shit story time. I don't know. I'm making conversations about it. So she's all like, yeah, I know your cousin. You know, we had had a rough start, but you know, we cool now. You know, boom, 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 boom. So I'm like, oh yeah, that's nice. You know, small world trying to make small conversation when I'm like, Pew. like I'm not even on earth at this point. I'm y'all co-workers and friends, crackheaded baby cousin. But basically, yes, that was crazy and so stupid at that point. But that's also how you know that I didn't really have any malicious intent or just that dumb. She was a little salty at first, but then I explained to her what he explained to me about like her ex and shit. And she was all like, I told him that that don't mean shit. Look, I told your ass ain't nothing happened. And the next time you say it happened again, I'm gonna knock your teeth out your mouth. I'm high as hell already. I get drunk too and just talk to her and just be on some real shit. She be feeling that shit too. She be feeling that shit. I'm telling her like, I didn't know nothing about you. 
This nigga ain't shit. You should leave him too. <laughs> Niggas ain't shit. He a eater. Fuck him. Like, you know, like that's how I'm coming at her. Like, you know, hot girl shit, city girl shit. I, well, not city girl shit. No, in my head, I don't know what, like, I don't really know. I don't know. <laughs> and we actually kind of became friends. He accused me of trying to take her away from him. And I was. Like, bitch. Because that's my bitch. That's my bitch. That's my bitch. At the end of the fucking day. It's just like, I can fuck you and I can fuck you, but I can't fuck both of y'all. Like, that's how I felt at the time. So we have our little moment, child, and she telling me about everything that he been doing and just filling me in on everything. Oh, he just came over here yesterday and pulled my pants down and we had sex. And I'm like, oh, really? You know, he just ate my coochie. I'm guessing that Sean told Ethel that, like, he hasn't slept with me yet. He kind of just thought that I was a good candidate for the threesome or whatever. You're a, comp a compulsional, compassionate liar like your, your, your lying is so compassionate with yourself that you believe i'm coming over her house she has a daughter that's like 17 like 22 at the time i'm kind of around her age like, sean ethel and her daughter to me was like my new family on some real sister wives type shit like i don't know hell i'm like fuck it i'm creating me a whole new family i'm not going anywhere i'm comfortable i'm sitting back pretty Mentally detached from my best friend. We definitely weren't hanging out like we used to. We were more so texting. I think she kind of noticed that I was disappearing. So she kind of popped back up. Like, you know, hey, what you doing? Where you at? Boom, boom, boom. So I kind of tried to merge my new life with my best friend. She come over with her ex-best friends, man. Me, Sean, her, and the dude sitting at the table playing Uno. I'm high as fuck. The boy my best friend brought over was looking at me with a side eye like, bitch, I know damn well. He's just looking at me like, I'm so disappointed in you to see. Kinda like, you know, hmm. You know, but she ain't never really say nothing. A couple of his friends came by the house too. It's like Bobby and Whitney hosting, we just, she didn't know yet. It was one particular evening and Sean wanted to get some money from his sister. He had pulled up on me and Sean. He was waiting on his sneaky link sister to pull up. He pulls out some coke. I do the coke in front of her. Like, I don't know. I knew it was bad because I was doing it to be dramatic. I didn't know it was like bad that it was just like cut off where they like, damn. But you know, I saw her looking like horrified. But she ain't saying that. She ain't saying that. He gets out the car. She's telling me to go home. Go home. You need to go. I'm keeping real. I'ma keep it real. You need to go home. You need to go home. Girl, mm-mm. Like, I don't wanna go home. What home? I don't have a home. She was telling me to go home, but on the hood though, if it was me, I would've told her mama. If the shoe was on the other foot, I would've told her mama or something. I would've did a little bit more, bitch. I would've called the police. You need to get, escort her out, out this motherfucking shit. Fuck this fuckers, get that bitch up out of here. Listen, I don't know. I don't know, but at the end of the day, I'm a grown ass woman at this time. I'm 22, like, at least sis was in high school. Like, I'm grown as hell at the time. So I kinda understand the, like, you wrong as hell. <laughs> like, damn. I explained the dynamic with Sean and Ethel. I told her everything that had happened up to that point. <laughs> we go pull up to Ethel house to go kick it. We chilling at Ethel house. And Ethel and my best friend actually became friends. She literally coming over to Ethel house, not to hang with me, but to hang with Ethel. And then when she pulled up, she like wouldn't talk to me. She wouldn't look me in my eyes or nothing. I said, damn, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> now, like I said before, me and Ethel ain't really got no problem with each other. Put our differences aside to see who the main culprit was, and we did for a moment. We did some type of truth. Just like, well, I'm done with him, and I said that I was done with him. We had came to that conclusion and everything, child. We made our truce or whatever, you know, shook hands, you know, we both done with him, right? Me, Ethel, and Sean in the living room of Ethel House, and we were sitting on the couch. He wanted to go on with the threesome. He rubbing on her, he rubbing on me. He trying to initiate it. He kept talking about, come on, come on, come on. Neither one of us would budge because we already done formed an alliance. So we just chilling. We cooling. I'm like, nah, you good. You straight. Boom, 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 boom. Kept going or whatever. This close to giving in. Why? When I was about to give in, Elta got up and told him to leave. He almost got a threesome. He didn't have his own car, he didn't drive, and Elton's truck don't work. That night, I literally had intentions to go drop him off to his mom's house. I don't know how we ended up around the street, back at the same shed. Tell me why we had sex that night, and he ate the, when I tell you he ate me off the bone, bitch. Ooh, ooh, I don't know what. I woke up to a lot of missed calls. My best friend had been trying to see where I was at. I ended up calling her back, and she tells me that she's outside. She knew where I was at because I had my location on. 
putting on my clothes and shit. I get in the car. I'm talking to her about the bomb ass head I had got last night. Talking to her about the amazing ass head that this nigga done gave me. You no, know, and just describing it. Tell me why at the end of the day, I found out that she had Elthal on the phone while I was talking about it. And she had showed Elthal where I was at. Girl, 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 girl. I don't know how, but me and Elthal were still kind of cool. Psych, that's fine. Plenty of opportunities to take my ass home. But I just did not want to go home. He had a temper. Remember that. It was just exciting. It really was. It's a kickback at Elthal's house. The gang's all together. They dapping up Sean cause like, damn nigga, you living the life, you know? Like, Lord have mercy. My best friend pull up, Elthal's ex pull up. Lord. He come and basically snatch her out her own part. They went for a ride. That pissed Sean the fuck off. Cause he did that shit in front of all Sean's friends. Playing Uno, you know, I'm chilling, I'm chilling, I'm chilling. Now, Elthal's daughter was into makeup and she was talking to me about like doing my makeup and everything like that. It got real loud and rebunctious in the house. So me and her went out into my car. So me and her went out into my car and you know, she did my eyebrows. I was feeling it cause I look like a straight up crackhead. What? Look, that's exactly what they about to call you upstairs, so you might as well get used to it. She kind of started trying to flirt with me or whatever. She's just like, yeah, you know, and I like girls too. I'm like, that's nice, baby. You know, it's okay to like girls. And then she basically was like, I want to eat your coochie. So I'm like, you tweaking. I don't play like that. Something about this doesn't sit right in my spirit. I was thinking about going the fuck home, but I couldn't because somebody was parked behind me. Elthal's boyfriend had brought his cousin with him. So his cousin was coming out the house. When the cousin was coming outside, you know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah. I told Elthal daughter, like, I'm finna get his number, you know what I'm saying? Sean gonna be pissed. I'm gonna make Sean so mad. So I pulled him right, he comes to the car, he got my phone, and he getting my number. And he gives me my phone back and he starts talking to me or whatever. Sean comes out the motherfucking house. When he come out the motherfucking house, he is pissed. He comes to the car door, take my phone, boop, hit me right in my face. <laughs> damn, bro, calm down, I ain't know it was like that. Da -da 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 -da. Hey, I'm sitting there like, damn, me neither. Belligerently pissed the fuck off. I get the gun and I'm charging at him, telling him to give me my phone back. So I know he mad and I know he not finna give me my phone. You have lost your mind. You have lost your mind. You have lost your mind. We start tussling. We're tussling over the gun. Tussling, 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 tussling. Like, I just want my phone. He easily could have shot me or shot himself or whatever. He gets the gun. I get my phone. How you gonna drop the gun, gangster Delicious? That is not gangster. That's very not gangster. Man, I can't believe this. You a fraud. It's like going to heaven and finding God smoking crap. Start shooting at Elthal's ex and his cousin. I go back and sit in my car like, oh my fucking. Elthal's ex and his cousin drive off. He come to the car. He's like, get over into the passenger seat. I get over into the passenger seat. He get in the car. He crank that bitch up. He pull off. He's mad driving, which he's done before. Raining and shit this evening. Going way above the speed limit. He's headed towards his mom's house. It was scary and to the point where I thought about jumping out of the car, but I knew if I jumped out the car, I probably was still gonna be injured horribly. I'm begging him to stop. I'm like, please stop, stop, stop. Just calm down. He completely snapped out of his mind. Sean has left the building. Not even responding to me. He's murmuring and going off about what had just happened. Man, these motherfuckers got me fucked up. I'm gonna kill these motherfuckers. <laughs> he crying and he mad as hell. Mad as hell. He jumping in front of cars, you know, dodging and getting in front of cars. Boom, 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 boom. The road had a curve in it. We hit that curve and he lost control and he hit another car and made that car hit another car. So it's a three car accident. No insurance on my car. My car is towed. It really could have flipped over because it was like boom, boom, and it didn't flip over. I promise you, airbags came out, side of front, all of them. We get out of the car and look at the damages. Oh my goodness, I wish I still had a picture of it. Even though I was doing all of these different drugs, even though I knew I wasn't sober and I don't know which thing made me not sober, if not all of them, I don't really know. From that point on, that's when like the high kicked in in overdrive and I'm really like not in my right mind. I don't know, Sean I snapped out his angry mode now. His friends pull up behind him and they're like laughing or whatever. You know, they're kind of looking at me trying to see how I'm reacting and blah, 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 blah. Sean is trying to accuse it of being the other people's my best friend pull up I'm trying to cry I can't even cry she's just like I told you to go home police take down whatever they need to take down thankfully we didn't get arrested because we probably clearly was under the influence but we didn't get arrested for it do you 
when do it becomes get ride in the cousin truck and we get dropped off at this hotel while they was getting the room together sean came back in the car i started fighting him we i'm pissed the fuck off i'm like yo old overgrown ass who the fuck crashes a car because they mad like who does that fighting him i'm fighting him i'm fighting him i'm pissed the fuck off he grabs me by my throat and he like slangs me out the back car door as if trying to like you know what i'm saying like just to get me to stop. Then we get out of the truck, everything going to the hotel room. He immediately goes to sleep. I don't know what it is about niggas who think that they can just go to sleep and that'll avoid any type of conflict. It's like he knew I wanted to fight and I wanted to argue and he just laid down and went to sleep. It infuriated me more. I'm like, okay, where's the gun? Where, Where's the gun at, you know? I'm about to kill you cause you done ruined every fucking thing. And I'm about to kill myself cause I done ruined every fucking thing. This is real. This is exactly what I was about to do. So, uh, where's the gun? I'm tapping him, where's the gun? Where's he acting like he in such a deep ass sleep? I'm patting his pockets down. He talking about some mm -mm, move. If I would have found that gun, it would have been a homicide, suicide, double homicide, double homicide. I literally wouldn't even be talking to y'all today if I would have found that gun. Next day comes around. I don't have no car. I call my mom. He's just like cold. Why would I help you when you done stole granddad money and you done went shopping and you done, you ain't try to offer nobody nothing. You ain't da 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 da. Oh, you went out, you went out of town. You went out of town and had a shopping spree with granddad money. Da 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 da. I'm trying to explain to her that that's not the case and she's not hearing it. So I get off the phone with her and I call my cousin. He came fucking through. Now you know I went batshit crazy. I gave Sean a kiss cause I knew that was the last time I was gonna ever see him him again in my motherfucking life. I gave him a peck on the lips like we were in a movie, bitch. So boom, now I'm picked up and I'm at my grandmom's house. I'm high as hell, I ain't gonna lie. I get to my grandmom's house, you know, I'm like, hey, you know, boom, 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 boom. Now I see my grandmother and I'm trying to, you know, put on a fake smile and whatnot, but she is on 10, she is on 10. She's mad as hell. She is not in the mood. She's just like, what, what, where's your car? Where's your car? What happened to you? Reality kind of sits in. She grabs my purse. I had some liquor in my purse. I had a bottle of Paul my son in my purse. And it was probably like this much left in it. And I just, you know what I'm saying? I wanted it or whatever. She took that bitch and poured it down the sink. I fucking lost it. I needed something to wash down my neutral. Really ready to die now. I literally go into the kitchen and attempt to try to grab a knife. I could stab myself. My grandma was like, and you better not. Girl, and she started charging for me. One moment. <laughs> And she stopped me from grabbing the knife. She grabbed me by my throat and pinned me up against the wall. It's like everything just hit me at once. The whole time, I'm like, to myself, like, this ain't even nothing. I might as well have just smoked like a couple of blunts. Like, it wasn't no, like, big high to me, you know? Only thing that made me say, oh shit, this shit right here, pressure, was that meth. You ever use crystal meth? Yes, I did. That very moment when I was sitting on that couch, it's like the crackhead switch came on and my brain was like, like this is your brain on drugs. Use that egg and hit it with that skillet to crack it because that's exactly what my brain felt like. On drugs. Questions. Yeah. At this point in my system, I have alcohol, tobacco, weed, cocaine, hydrocodone, Xanax, meth, beans, and Molly. Well, damn. I'm sorry. I don't know, bitch. I guess sprinkle anxiety attack on it and that shit just fuel on the fire. Next thing you know, my cousin Shelly pull up, my mama and my stepdaddy pull up, Vincent come back with his girlfriend, Victoria pull up, all the kids is the... <laughs> going to my grandma room which doesn't help because they kept the damn door open and I had my first and last intervention. It turns out that Elto had went to Shelly and told Shelly that I had stole my granddaddy's money, stole his checks and I wrote bad checks. She gonna put a police report on me because she had got her house through section 8. This was basically a shootout in front of her house. She was at risk of losing her home. She said something threatening about Shelly and my mom or something and Shelly blacked the fuck out. They at work, they start fighting. That's what had happened. Shelly had told my mom so by the time I had called my mom to tell her what happened my mom already think that she know everything we all sitting in the living room they like oh you stole from your granddaddy oh you brought people down there to the house to go steal from him oh he rolling in his grave I mean I don't know I was just cleaning the house and I found money like I know y'all probably would like to have thought 
that it was Santana. And it probably would have been a thing if it was Santana. But it's not Santana. So I can't I can't help y'all with it. Crackhead, crashed out, no, 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 like everybody literally sat down to really like do that. <laughs> Little dog. <laughs> they asking me like why I did it. My high ass, like I'm not gonna lie. I had said something about how good his head was. But I'm high as hell and I'm kinda trying to get smart. And it was just like, well, you should have went and bought a toy. My stepdad called me a hoe. You know, I'm high and I'm like, well, men do it. They talking about you took his money and went to Mississippi because that's where Sean and his folks is originally from, Mississippi. I never left Alabama. We went and got some Louis. Da -da 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 -da. I had a red Louis Vuitton bag that we literally bought from another crackhead at the gas station. So it was like a trade-off of something we had. So we didn't even pay money for it. I'm telling them that it wasn't real and they just like, we don't care. <laughs> like, it was bad. They did all this in front of my grandma. My grandma is hard broken she tried to beat my ass <laughs> they ain't pull me to the side they ain't try to ask me for my side of the story i'm trying to defend myself because i know it looks bad it wasn't me okay it wasn't me. i'm high i am high i am high i tell them that they got me fucked up because they do shelly hopped on me my grandma hopped on me Like that, Before my granddaddy died, he told me to write down my name, write down my social birth, and all my information on the sheet of paper so he could put my name on a bank account. And he would listen to me and I'm hardly explaining myself right because I'm high as hell. I don't even know where the high came from, but I'm high as hell. I didn't feel any of that shit. I'm running out the house, running, trying to get away from my grandmama. Okay, boom, what the fuck is we finna do with her? My mom didn't say nothing, but my stepdad was just like, I already told Rochelle that she only come in the house to take a shower and she might as well get kicked out and move out anyways. And I think she should get kicked out. I don't think she should be here. You know, come on daddy, don't do me like that. <laughs> to explain to them that that's not the case but i'm high as hell and don't nobody believe me been in suicide mode this whole time i was trying to act like i was sober and like i was in my right mind and i had sense and i could not miss jackson <laughs> my grandma in the background hyperventilating crying and she trying to get to me my stepdad and blocking her i called my best friend to let her know what was happening how i needed a place to stay she was all like well you can't stay here bitch because i don't already told my mom it was bad for her. It was really bad for her. And yes, I was sharing the the shady post towards her. Grandma I'm gonna snatch that seven plus out of my hand. I haven't seen it since. I almost got shot for this phone. I ain't seen it since. And she was just like, no. Oh, you not going with her. You not going nowhere. My child is still sitting down trying to process this. I guess she felt bad for me and felt bad for my grandma. Which is her sister. Eventually, she was like, okay, she can come down the street and stay with me. So, boom, my parents leave. Shelly and her kids leave. Everybody, you know, go their separate ways. And I think I went down the street. Do you... When do it becomes...